Hey guys, welcome back to another quick DAX Concepts video uh, where we're going to talk about how to return the last working date. Now this video is not really deep into the DAX Concepts as much as it is a quick tip. How can you do something very quick, very simple with DAX? The mechanism or the problem that we're going to be trying to solve today can be solved in one of two ways. One way is going to be using the filters pane. Another way is going to be using DAX. And which method you use depends on your business requirements and your scenario specifically. All right, so we're going to jump right into that here in a minute. My name is Mitchell Pearson. Thank you for joining me for another one of these videos. If you like the video today, please make sure that you like the video. Uh, I don't make any money off of you liking the video or watching this video. But it does make me feel good when people like the video and encourages me to do more videos. So please feel free to hit like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Now, there's really going to be two mechanisms for solving this problem. The first one, like I said, is going to be using the filters pane. We'll come back to that last. The uh, first one we're going to talk about is using DAX. Now, the scenario here, and I want you to imagine this, is going to be a scenario where you are not open on every day of the year. But when you come back to work tomorrow, right? you want to be able to see the last day, the last working day. So if I come back to work on Tuesday, but Monday was a holiday, I want to see Friday. If I come back to work on Thursday and Wednesday was a holiday, I want to see Tuesday. So how do we solve that? Now, of course, this solution that I'm talking about here works for other things as well, like show me the last month, show me the last quarter, show me the last year. You can absolutely modify this and customize it. Today, I'm just going to give you that basic template. So let's jump right in, head over to Power BI, and take a look at how we will set this up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is jump right into the data view here. And from the data view on the date table, we're going to go ahead and create a new calculated column. Now I already have the calculated column in here, right here, last working date flag. So we'll click on this guy and just take a look at what it is real quick so you don't have to watch me write any DAX. But what I'm doing on this last working date flag is I'm saying if the date, which in a previous video we talked about row context. Now, this is where those concepts that we talked about before have to kind of resonate with you if you've watched those videos, right? They start to make sense a little bit. We are in a calculated column. We know that the calculated column is creating a row context. So we're going to be looking at each row individually working on those rows one by one. And so here we're saying if date date, what does that mean? It means date, the date value from that row that I'm looking at. So on the date table, the date value from that specific row, if it is equal to the maximum order date in my internet sales table, that's my transaction table. This solves that whole working day problem because now I'm looking at the last date in my order date. Now here's the question for you. I pose this to you as a DAX question. How do you know that that's going to get the last order date in the entire internet sales table and not the last date that's going to be filtered by this table. If that made no sense to you, then you probably didn't see the last video. But by default, there is an active relationship between the date table and internet sales table. And you know that when you're working in measures, when you have slicers in your report, this table automatically filters down the internet sales table, right? So if this table were to automatically filter down the internet sales table, then if we were to look at, let's say, the first row of data here, right here, we see July 1st of 2005. If that were filtering down internet sales, then the maximum internet sales order date would return for that row July 1st, right? Let's just type this in here, July 1st of 2005. And what that means is that is July 1st equal to July 1st? It would be true. Every row would evaluate to true. Now, I'm going to talk more about this concept in, in later videos when we get into something called context transition, which is where row filters get added to the filter context. Sometimes we don't want that to happen. Sometimes we do. But for this example, we don't have to worry about that. This is actually going to be the very last date in the order date table, in the internet sales table. So for every single row in this table, in my date table, we're going to look at the row and we're going to say, is July 1st, 2005, is it equal to 7-31-2008? And the reason we're comparing it to 7-31-2008 is because that is the last day in the internet sales table. It's the last day. It's the last time that we had any transaction whatsoever. So this is a great, quick and easy way to do that. And because of the row context, it's working in our favor and we're able to take advantage of that. 
like I said, in future videos, we're going to talk more about context transition. Now, if that is true, if the date that I'm looking at is equal to 731, then on the new column that we are creating, we're going to flag it as the latest working day. So latest working day. If it is false, it is not equal to the last day, which is going to be almost every row in our table. I think we have 2,191 rows in the date table. Only one row is going to be equal to the last working day. So the other 2,190, they're going to just return their regular date. Now, I used format here to essentially convert the date from a date data type to a text value because I would get an error message if I just said return date. So that's a little extra tip for you there. I like to use format to kind of just convert uh, the data type. So I'm saying last latest working date, that's a string. So therefore the false condition must be a string as well. So we're using format to do that. Now we're almost done with this example. I want this to be a quick video. So let's go ahead and hit enter on that. I went a little deep into talking about context a little bit, um, but you have to have context from the previous videos as well. So we're going to let that go ahead and run. As soon as it's done, we're going to go back to the report view and let's take a look at this in a report. All right, so now that that is completed, we're going to go back over to our last date report and we are going to quickly add a slicer. So you see right now we're looking at the last date in the date table, 12-31-2010. This is just a basic measure, 29 million total sales. There's no filters really on this report, but I'm going to go in there and add a slicer real quick. And I'm going to go through this part a little bit quick because we're kind of focused on DAX but I'll try to zoom in on the parts that you're interested in potentially for later on and you can pause the video and slow it down if you need to. So in the date table, I'm going to go ahead and grab the last working date flag and we'll drop that right here in our new slicer. And I want this slicer to be a drop down. So the way that you make it a drop down is right here in the top right, I can click on the little caret symbol there and change it to a drop down. The other thing that I want to change about this is I want to have a search bar because we're talking about thousands of days here, right? So in order to add a search bar to our filter criteria, you'll notice that there's no search bar here. I'll click on the little ellipsis right here at the top. And from there, I'm going to grab the search bar and boom, there we go. We're now in business. Let's see if we can open that up. There it is. So now we have a search bar. All right. So let's do the test, right? We call this, I think, latest working day. So we start typing that in. We go ahead and click right here. And now we have our latest working date. You see that the latest working date in our internet sales table is in fact 731. So this measure is just kind of validating what we're getting right here. We see that we have $2,643 in sales for that day. And here are our territories broken down for the last working day. This is beautiful, this is simple. The other thing you might wanna do with this solution is maybe sort that flag column. So what I did is, and I meant to actually delete all this so we'd work through it together before the video and I forgot, but that's okay because this makes the video a little bit quicker anyway. If I go over and select my last working date flag, so I'm clicking on the name itself, right? If I click on the name, not the checkbox, I click on the name, you got the gray border there. Then I can go up to column tools at the very top and I can tell it that I want to sort by column and I'm sorting it by the actual date. Because it's a text value, if we were to sort it by itself, that it gets all messed up, right? So we sort it by the date and that gives us a good order. Now the benefit of this is yes, I have it broken down to the search right now. So if we click on this and I select latest working date, but then I delete the search, your end users can now see the latest working date but they also have the flexibility of coming in here and choosing additional dates as well, which is really, really nice. And so this is very flexible, very good solution for last working date. And you say, okay, well, Mitchell, I don't have the problem of working date, right? We, we are open 24 seven. We're the Amazon of the world. We're e-commerce. Can you give me a simpler solution, something quicker, something easier? Absolutely. So the other method that I want to talk about is the filter pane. Now, if you're not familiar with relative, date filtering in Power BI don't hang up yet, right? Don't close this video out. Stay on for just a couple more minutes. What we're going to do is in the filters pane, I'm going to add another filter on this page or at least one filter on this page. So I'm going to click in the background here. Nothing is selected and filters on this page. I'm going to go grab the date column from my date table and I'm going to drop it right there in the filter section. 
Now I could of course go through basic filtering and choose a date that I want. However, if you choose the drop down right here, if you choose the drop down right here, you can do advanced, you can do relative date. That's the one we want. So I'm going to grab relative date. And one of the cool things about relative date is I could say is in the last, and then I could say one days, right? So is in the last one day or two days. Um, or you could even do something like weeks, calendar weeks, month, calendar month, so on and so forth. So this is really cool. This is really flexible. Um, if I can get out of here real quick, once you've done that, you need to click apply filter. If you want to include today also, you can do that. Or you can say, you know what? I don't want to include today. I just want to see yesterday's results. You can do that as well. So then you click apply filter. And what this will do is this is going to filter down your report to the last day. Now my data doesn't have any results for you know the prior day. I won't say what data is because I record these videos in advance, but I don't have any data for the prior day, so I don't see anything. The last day I have in this data set is all the way back in 2008, right? So I don't see anything in this result set, but this is a really good solution. Now, we're not done. Thanks to Priscilla Camp, who is um, somebody who I know from the BI community working in Power BI. She gave me a cool tip one time, and I wanna share that with you. I'll put her contact information in the description below. She said that what you can do is you can change this to, to relative date because one of the problems you have is, okay, I changed it to relative date, but now how can my end users have that customizable interaction with the report where they can change it to different days? Well, what you can do is once you change it to relative day and you've set it up and you've clicked apply filter, go ahead and click on basic filtering and just save your report like that. It still saves the relative filter the way that you set it up, but it also gives your end users the capability and opportunity to come in here and change the filter. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you and enjoy.